hello again, this is Oliver Blair. I'm going to uh, sort of go over putting a model from SketchUp into Photoshop and then putting some uh, entourage into it so we can get uh, different senses of scale um, and sort of, yeah, practice doing that or sort of have a play with doing that. So I've, what I've got here is that model from the first SketchUp tutorial where I sort of went over going from a drawing to making a, um, a sort of complex model. Oh, that's quite cool. Maybe I'll go with that. And then what I'll do is I'll bring the styles over and I'll just edit that and I'll turn turn it so it's just just sort of lines and then get the background to be white so it's just like a hidden line view of it yeah I think first of all what you want to do is save the scene so I think you go up here to um, animation view animation and then you go add scene and it should come up under here under window scenes there we are. So there's our, our scene now. And that means that if you go anywhere else in the model, you can always get back to where you were, where you sort of taken those screenshots from. And so I'll just do it that way for now. So in Windows, it's Alt, Print Screen. And then just, uh, I'm not sure if you guys have Print Screen, but save it as JPEG. I think you've got it now. Oh, yes, yeah, just the way I do it. Under Options, Open Screen, and then on the uh, on the bottom in Photoshop, right you can just go of that export here. dialog. You can have all these different and options. So uh, that's quite small. Paste. That's smaller than the screen, so it's, yeah, it's not working. That is. View sizes. That size. That's nice. Oh, well. But I was just something round like. That's okay. Oh, three I'll grand just or something like that. Three thousand. I'll just do that for now, and then uh, yeah. Okay, export, and then it'll take a wee while. So open that image up and see how the line weight's actually a bit different than the um, in SketchUp. It's a bit bit thicker here. That's because the image is actually a lot bigger. So if I zoom in, use the Zoom tool and just get actual pixels, so it's actually a bit bigger, which is nice because we can do a lot, make it look a lot better if we start off with a higher resolution image. So that's just lines, basically. So what we can do is go up to uh, what is it? Select color range, and then go click on the white. And then change this fuzziness. I'm not sure what it might be. It might be something like. I want quite a thick line, so it might be somewhere around there. 30 ish. Too much, or not enough fuzziness, and it'll select um, too much of the black, or not enough of the black. And too much fuzziness will select too much of the black. So we want sort of something like this. Maybe that's not enough actually. Oh no, yeah, that'd be alright. And then, and then you can just, well, all the white is selected, you can go Control shift i and that'll invert the selection, so now it's just selecting the lines, and then you can go Control j and it puts all those lines onto a new layer, copies them onto a new layer. So that might work, something like that. What that means is we can then um, export other views out and have like a like a wire mesh as well on, on underneath it. Let's make a new layer. Make it white or black. So there's still a bit of white in those lines. But oh well. 
so now we want some um, some entourage or something to make it look like it's a certain scale because this could be a like galaxy or a, a microbe or anything in between so what I'll do is I'll just um, go to Google and, and, and type in something like a spaceship and then uh, scrap an image of a spaceship something cool like yeah, uh, there's another Star Wars one. Something black and white might make sense. We'll try this. Here we go. Um, and you can just go in Chrome. You can go right-click, copy image. Something like that might work. And here you can go Control V. Got this black background on the image as well. Oh wait, That's one way to do it is use the magic wand. We press uh, W. Uh -huh. Oh, it's on the quick selection tool. So I just go up here and go and just hold down on that button. Go magic wand. You can right and you can just click. Something cool. And uh, it's selected some of the ship as well. So that means the tolerance but is too, too weird, but too high. So maybe 12 or something. Yeah, there we go. And you can delete that. So that it could be that big, or it could be um, it could be that big. To get it to um, scale, what I did there was just Control T, and then hold down Alt and Shift, and it scales based on the origin point or the um, the pivot point. So you can actually change that, and then go scale it from there. It's handy when you got someone's feet or something. But that looks a bit dumb. I might look alright, but it looks kind of retarded. Maybe I'll do something else. I'll do like a um, like a microbe or a, like a little bug or something. Something like this. What a funny looking dude. And I'll go copy image. Bring it back in here. And then do the same selection thing because it's on a white background so it should work. And so you see there the tolerance wasn't high enough. So I'll go up to 32 again. It's a bit better. And you can hold down shift and select more areas and go delete again oh I missed a bit there and I can hold control I and make it inverted might make it look a bit better or control U and change the um, saturation and stuff of the guy that blue looked alright Maybe something like that. Looks like it's caught in a spider's web or something, maybe. So that could work. You know, or that. Or, um... It looks a bit flat though. So maybe I'll go back to SketchUp and um, export it as a different sort of style. So maybe I'll use that with the shading and bring the shadows in and use them. Sort of see what's happening here. Changing the month alters the shading a bit. That's quite interesting up there. And then time of day. And then I'll actually turn the shadows on as well. See what that does. It's a bit strange. I think I'd like to be like that. And then I'll export that again. I 
open it up and um, because it's opened into another, another tan in Photoshop I can just go control A and then copy it over to this one I think I'll put it underneath the lines oh yeah underneath the lines so what that means is we can actually edit the lines separately to the actual thing. See how that looks hideous? So what you can do is um, control U on the line layer and then bring the the lightness right down and so it blocks it all out. Alright, now that's exported I can um, it makes it a bit um, not as smooth but you can do different things with the lines if you want. Oh. And then you can um, get a layer mask. I think it's this one. Add a layer mask to the lines. And make sure that's selected. And then get the eraser tool. The, uh, so just press E. Ramp up the size a bit. And you can sort of delete parts if you want or you know so if you just want lines over here or something or something I don't know but maybe you want it sort of black or it's kind of interesting I might duplicate that layer and then um, sort of give it a color a bit of red or uh, maybe an orange or something. Maybe a bit of orange up there. I'm liking that sort of color difference, sort of variation. And then we can um, add another mask to this and do that same editing thing. But I might I might make it a bit softer. Bit bigger. Oh, that's way too big. Yeah, something like that. It's gonna sort of have have no colour on this side. Or something. And then you can brush it back in with the B with the, the brush. You can just press B for that. Hmm, maybe it works better like that. Yeah, maybe something like that. Actually, that's kind of bad. I kind of like the orange um, lines as well, so maybe I can make the lines orange by going colorize and then up the saturation. And then I might have to change the lightness. Oh, yeah, here we are. It's sort of yellow. Maybe a contrast works. It's getting a bit hideous, isn't it? It's a bit messy. A bit busy. Might just do that. And then bring some more of those lines back in. A little bit more. we go, something like that, and then um, so we've got a bit of sort of variation so it's not so it's gone from the SketchUp image which is just there to something with a bit more just that. interesting stuff going on yeah and I'm not sure if the bug or the ship works still But uh, maybe I'll get something else. 
some entourage. What would work? I reckon a space dude or something. Space girl. Oh, this might be bad. Alright, and that was pretty funny, so, um, <laughs> but I found a good one. Or three of the same. Edit this out. Um, destroyed. But, uh, so, what we can do, because this is um, all lines and stuff, so illustration, we can sort of make it maybe look like um, this a wee bit. Hopefully. So I'll just get rid of the background with that wand trick. And then I'll put each version onto a different layer. So you can go select it and then right click and then go layer by cut. And then oh, I'll have to go back onto that layer. And layer by cut again. So now they're all on um, separate layers. So I was thinking about doing something sort of strange. We're um, they're all behind sort of being weird. Looks like it's fading out or something. So what we can do is um, select one layer and then just go, just type in a number so I can go 50. Yeah, I can't find any good ones. So and that'll alter the opacity of that layer. Oh, she's pretty good. Cool. So maybe I'll make that one 20 or something. And make the top one 80. That's all really bad. That might work. And then what I can do is select all the layers and then go duplicate. Uh, yeah. And then, um, Control E, I think. Yeah, Control E merges them all. So now they're all just that one layer. And what we can do is then hopefully sort of colorize it or, or change the colors. Or not. And then, um, Maybe just go select all all of these and then um, let's get rid of that um, and then um, select the color. So maybe it's just black. And then alter that colour. No, that's not going to work, is it? And then you can um, you can hold an alt while you're transforming and you can pick where... Oh, right, and it was kind of bad, so... Um, the um, point of rotation should be... I did that out, whatever. It's pretty funny, but... Uh, I found it a uh, sort of good there. one, I think. So she's sort of... Oh, she's sort of walking on there or something. Make her a bit smaller, maybe. So it looks like she's in this epic auditorium arena. Thing. Something like that. And then she doesn't really have enough of that trailing thing, so I'll just go control J again. And then um, move the one behind her out a bit, so it looks like that. Put that down to 50.